Welcome, this is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I wanted to go over year-to-date 2020 results for the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room. So this is all the trades going back from the beginning of the year, January through pretty much the end here. We're getting into the end of November, November 20th. And an advanced trader risk is around $2,500 per trade. That's the risk. In the live trading room, I call the entry the stop and targets and exits. So year to date, again, 2020, 931,481. So it's been really a very, very active year. And I think part of it is I've been home a lot. The market's been volatile. The trades have been there. And I've been taking advantage of the momentum and the volatility that really the market has given this year. If you'd like to learn what I do, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So right now we're still in earnings season for the fall. Next earnings season begins in January. There's four quarterly earnings seasons to trade. Those make the best times to do gaps. I only trade gaps. I trade something called golden gaps, which is the term that I named my system, which is a 26 point rating system that I use to determine what stocks to trade each day. And that's why I call all the trades that we're gonna go over with for the entire year. So it really is a good time to learn how to, uh, how to master my system, to learn the skills, and then apply them before the next earnings season starts, which again is January. So for a, an advanced trader risk, it's around $2,500 a trade. Some trades we did ads uh, where we doubled up, was like two trades in one. Uh, we don't do that every trade, and I don't do that every week even, but sometimes we've done that. Normally, people can risk, according to what the size is of their account, you can open up a proprietary day trading account with as little as $5,000 and have 10 to 1 margin or 50,000 buying power. Um, obviously you would not have a $2,500 a risk uh, trade with a $5,000 account. You don't want to risk 50% of your account in one trade, but you can set your risk accordingly. With a $5,000 account, you could start out with a $250 risk. So you can use a beginner risk or an intermediate risk or an advanced risk with my system. I think that's the nice thing about my system and trading gaps. Uh, these are day trades. These are equity trades where you take the trades on margin. You also can use my system for options. You don't need margin to do options. But what we're going to talk about here is only the day trades. And again, these are equity trades where you would have to have an account set up with a broker to short or go long stocks. And most of these trades really um, are shorts because I do prefer to short. Uh, every once in a while, we will go long when I see a good gap. And I do teach a bullish golden gap course too, but the main class I teach is the bearish class. So this is going all the way back till January. Seems like a long time ago. This is before COVID hit really the world and, and the United States and, and the market. So started off the year, took a couple days off, then got into it. A uh, couple good ones are at the beginning of the year. Tessa really was a very, uh, bullish gap that we did at the beginning of the year. So Tesla was a big winner for the day trades and for the options to start out the year. We also did the market a bunch at the beginning of the year. And uh, some of the market trades this year were long, some of them were shorts. Again, January starts earning season. Uh, when I take a loss, it's because I take the stop. So I put in a hard stop, it's called a limit order stop. So it stops me out and then I lose. Um, if I decide I want to take another trade, it's called a retake. I do teach that in the class as well. Um, some of these trades who were retakes, some of them were not. Sometimes I don't do a retake or sometimes it doesn't set up. Uh, we did a number of earnings in January. And sometimes I do gaps based on news as well. There's been a lot of news gaps as well during COVID. Uh, but this was first quarter earnings season. Here you can see when was a retake, but it didn't, didn't work out two trades in win, but it didn't work that day. Um, MM, two trades here in the MM. One was break even, one was profitable. Two trades in PFE. Nice PFE, uh, that ended up working out really well. AMD was earnings, that was the 29th. And sometimes then I do trades with the market. 
because sometimes stocks gap with the market. You had that in a lot of the high flyers this year, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple sometimes when we did them. Uh, then there will be days, this was the beginning of February, where I don't do any trades. Maybe there isn't any good gaps. It has to meet my criteria. If it doesn't, then I don't do it. Snap was a good trade, I remember that. That was earnings as well. I'd say most of the stocks that I trade are in the price range, I'd say between $20 and maybe $100, $150. So it's a wide, wide range. We're not doing any low float stocks. We're not doing any penny stocks. I rarely do anything even under $5, just so you know that. Every once in a while we do do the market though, and the market can be expensive, but you could do the market as an options trade if you don't want to do it as a, on margin. Twitter was a nice gap back here. This was earlier in the year in February. UA, we did a bunch of times this year. This was a retake, first one lost, second one worked. Market, Lyft was a good one too. And as the month went on in then February, again, this was all before COVID, this was earnings season. And typically I'm very active during earnings season as well. But really, uh, when I get up in the morning, I'll scan for as many things as I can find, then I'll make a small watch list I won't rate a thousand things. I will make a small list and I will narrow them down to the ones I want to rate. And then I will do the highest rated ones. Sometimes I only do one trade a day. If I make my goal in one trade, then I'm just done. AAL, like here, take it, boom, out, done for the day. EXAS, same thing here. Tall, again, take it, done. BYND was a really uh, active one for us that we did a lot. We did that in 2019. A couple good trades in that this year as well. This was 228. That's the beyond me. Typically when I do, you know, more than even four things a day though, it's because the morning has started out where things weren't setting up right. Where you can see here, uh, I took a few losses here at the beginning. So the more tr active I am, it tends to be that I'm having a difficult day. The best days I have, the most profitable days I have, the easiest days are when I'm in and out of something once, which you can really tell even looking through through all the months going back from the beginning of the year. Twitter was one here, there was three retakes. That just did not work out the way that I thought that it would. That was back in March, and this was right before COVID hit. Boeing was another stock that we did a lot this year. My God, I can't even tell you how many trades. Between the options trades and the day trades, that was really, even now today, probably the number one short this year for us. Um, and I, my clients made a lot of money doing that. Again, every which way but loose. Uh, it hasn't been working right lately. Not that I'll never do it again. But I'd say the beginning part of the year, even into the summer months, BA was really one of the best shorts that you possibly could have done. Huge trades in Boeing. This was a day trade. 10,000 plus, this was another day trade here, 12,000 plus, why? The stock moves big, it moves fast. The setups were there, 29,000, this was again during the time when the COVID hit. So this was 311 and you had all those airline stocks that were just tanking. Then we took a break because the market was halted a couple days. Uh, the market was really wild at that one period where we just uh, waited for the market to flush out. It wasn't a good time to trade. Things were getting halted. Um, this was right during the lockdown. Boeing, again, we did this here, then the 27th. CCO is another one we did a lot. Another Boeing trade, end of March. Cruise lines, hit them a ton this year. Beautiful trades, 14,215 CCL, RCL2. JPM, the banks got hit. Remember all of this, another huge trade in Boeing. This was the start of April. Again, this was still during the period, right when everything was shut down, that it was the 30 days to spread, more trades in Boeing. Market, we did a bunch. And again, some days we won't do any trades because they won't meet my criteria. Another trade in Boeing, I, I just like, here's another one. There were so many Boeing shorts this year, I literally couldn't even tell you. And there were so many that were huge. There was another big one, 7,800. And there was a few market trades that were huge too. This was 421, SPY, the Qs. And again, sometimes I will do things in a group with the market. We'll do them all together with the market. And the airlines were good too. Airlines or cruise lines were good this year during that period as well because they were tanking. Uh, UAL, huge trade here. SPY was a huge trade here. 
WMT was big. Another Boeing, another Boeing. UPS was good. This was earnings. Spring ACAM, nice trade, 4,500. Twitter was a great trade here. Again, Boeing, Boeing. UPS, MCD, this was a big day. SPY, 9,200. TDOC, UPS, and the Diamonds. That was an active day. That was second quarter then, earnings season had started. And then into May, I remember the market was still really, really volatile at this, this beginning period, even after the initial 30-day lockdowns. Like things didn't open up right away. Uh, and more Boeing trains, it, it was really just, I was picking the quality gap. And again, some of the days was the market. It was the day, huge trade in the market. This was May 1st and CCL2. So if, if the market's a good gap, we will do it. We don't trade the market every day, but if there isn't anything else and the market's a good gap, then I'm gonna do it. Boeing, another one here over seven grand, and AAL, airline, beautiful trade. And then nothing on the 12th, CCL and BA again, SPY and BA again, banks again. Urban was a great trade on the 20th. Target, BBY was a great trade. That was earnings on the 21st. And the room was closed on the 22nd. No trades at 26. HPQ is always a nice stock to trade. All the stocks that we trade are things that you would know, companies that you would know, or most of them would be. No trades in the first and second. Again, the market on the third. It was really, really a very volatile year to play the market. If you knew how to play it, you could make money doing it, which we did. Again, these are all day trades. Where the room usually is, I usually start talking about 9.15. And we try to be done by 10, 30, 11. Some days it's open a little bit later, but I usually try to get in and out in the morning. Some of the trades though, if you're up, you can hold them longer, but if you have to leave and have to go somewhere, you have to go somewhere. In this year, I've been able to stay home and follow things through if they're continuing to go. This was another huge day for the market, June 11th. Diamonds, Spy, Boeing, Starbucks was here, GS, that was a nice gap. WW, beautiful trade. And again, some of these things have really good price points where you can really take a lot of size, uh, where it doesn't cost as much with the buying power. Apple was a great trade here on the 23rd. Again, CCL, Boeing. There's Boeing again. Boeing was like every week. Nike, great earnings. Boeing, Mu, FDX was a good play. BA twice. Rome was closed here for July 4th. Apple was a nice trade here. We did the banks a, a bit this year too. Here we see Goldman lost on the 15th. Netflix was okay there on the 17th. It was a win. Better trade here on the 21st. Urban lost. Uh, Snap was a winner. Next day didn't work. Microsoft lost. Big winner on Netflix on the 23rd. NTC was a nice winner. And there again, Boeing. If you can even believe it. <laughs> Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. eBay is a nice stock to trade. Very easy, tight spread. Uh, next day, a couple losses in here. eBay didn't work the second day. Boeing had a loss, Q's loss. Facebook won, Apple, huge winner in the 31st. Snap won, nice winner here. Apple, Disney was a good one. We played Disney more, I think, last year. Disney, again, has been struggling with the COVID period too. Uh, any, any of these hospitality resorts. WDC was a good trade. Babel was a good trade on the 7th. No trades on the 10th. Microsoft, again, had the retake. Cisco's fun to trade. Baidu was a little one. No trades the 17th. Target did a couple of times on the 19th. Again, that was earnings. PLCE was a good one. There were days in there it was slower. That was the summer. <laughs> Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. Didn't work here, though, on, the, on September 1st. Uh, Spy was a great trade. And Facebook there on the 2nd of September. CN won on the 3rd. There's Boeing again, another nice winner. Boeing again, the ninth. It, the, you know, I, it was just the follow through in that chart was unbelievable. I mean, we were, I was just like, you know what? If it rates good, we're doing it. Even if it's three times a week, four times a week, that was, it was really like the go-to stock all year. Apple was a winner on the 11th. 16th, Apple was another nice winner. A couple losses in here. 17th was a tough day. Facebook was the winner on that day though. And again, all the market on the 21st of September. Huge market trade on the 23rd. Boeing again on the 24th. Market, Mew. Mew is a good stock to trade. Spy was a break, we went on the 2nd. Apple, nice winner here. 
in October. And now again, this was starting earnings season two. WFC was a nice trade. Uh, Boeing again. Twitter didn't work out here in the 15th. WFC again, RCL. Again, these cruise lines were, and, and airlines, we just did them so often. IBM was a nice winner. Q's big winner there again. Netflix needed a retake, which is fine. IBM worked here, SPY didn't. Apple was a winner, huge trade in the market. And again, the diamonds and Boeing were going together really a lot this whole year. And, he, and even now, uh, another diamonds trade, Lily, really nice trade. And, and these market trades were just huge. This was the end of October. eBay lost, SPY lost. That was the 29th. Twitter worked, needed a retake on the 30th. Again, I teach that in the class. Um, 11 3 had a loser, but then a beautiful trade in PayPal. Boeing did not work here. Like I said, that's been struggling lately. WFC was a good winner on the third. JPM won, BABA won, SPY won off on the ninth. Facebook was a solid winner. No trades in the 11th. Boeing didn't work here either. This was just recently. SPY big winner. AL didn't work here. Market winner. 16th, Zoom lost, Facebook lost, Twitter won and Netflix won. 17th, Target and Walmart and the SPY lost. That was a losing day. Netflix did not work. Low was a big trade on the 18th. And this day here, nothing worked in the initial point in the morning. Then the SPY worked later and the diamonds worked later, Facebook and then WDA, which was a beautiful trade on 11.20. So I think, you know, for me personally, the best trades I have and the, and the most fun trades are when I can take something and make a lot, at least one risk unit in five, 10 minutes. I mean, that's ideal for me. Now, the risk unit, getting back to what I was saying, is an average of $2,500 a trade for an advanced risk. You can risk more if you want to. I would even say, even if you're risking 1,000 or 1,500, I would consider that really an intermediate, getting close to an advanced risk. Uh, I, I would practice with lower cost stocks if you're not used to taking several thousand shares, three, four, five thousand shares of something. If you've never taken a position like that, I would practice. But again, I teach how to use stops in the class, and I think that's an important part of this. You can't take 5,000 shares of a position as a day trade. Stocks move too fast and not have a stop in. Because you could say, well, I'll kill it, but it gets here. But, it, you know, things move too quickly. And as fast as you can make money, you can also lose it. So the stop is like the insurance. It protects you. You have to have a consistent risk, though, in every trade. If you do not have a similar risk in every trade, you're not going to have consistent results. And ultimately, you want to have consistent results. That's very important. And again, if the losers are going to lose, you just want them to just stop out. And then you can retake them if you want to or take another trade. You can't let trades that aren't going to work run, run amok. So that is why I really think it's important to, to use stops. And as far as the, some of the big trades we had, and I call them dream targets, I talk about the targets in the room. And for example, if I say if it's something a day where we would have a power trend going on or if we'd have the market with you, um, and even if you were doing a specific stock, I talk about that and where you'd want to hold something. W Day was one of those ones from Friday. Actually, that didn't really have the market with it, but it wasn't against it. But that was one that I said this can go to the dream target. So again, do you have to risk $2,500 a trade? No. But you can risk $100 a trade. You can have a small account. You can take 100 shares of something if you want. The idea is to learn the system and then to be green, 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 green. You want to be profitable. You want to book money. You want to have more winners than losers. The only way you're going to get ahead doing this is having more winners than losers. And some of those winners will be big. Not every trade will be huge. Your goal is to risk one amount and turn it over into one amount. So for example, if you're risking $1,500, then your goal is to make around $1,500 a trade. Some trades will be more than that. Some trades will be slightly less, OK? But at the end of the day, you can trade with a small account. But if you have the funds and can take a risk of $2,500 a trade, you can see that day trading can be extremely lucrative. Now, again, this was a very active year for me, 2020, more so than any, any other year, quite frankly. 
And again, part of it was a volatility in the market. Part of it, there was a lot of gaps there to do. And also I was home. So because I was home and looking at my charts so much, I saw a lot of trades. I noticed a lot of things. I saw what was happening in the market. I saw what was playable. Uh, you can do as many gaps as you want, as many gaps that rate well per the system. So anyways, uh, I teach a class once a month on my method. It's called the Golden Gap Course. Just to give you an idea, if you don't understand margin or buying power, just to talk about it briefly here. If you have a $40 stock price, say, you have 200 shares, that would cost you, what, $8,000 in buying power. Okay, that's an average price. So you could take that with a $2,500 proprietary day trading account because you're going to have 10 to 1 buying power, which means you would have 25,000 in buying power, you would need eight, so you could take a position like that. Now, if you don't know what a proprietary day trading account is, Google it, there's tons out there. And you also could open up an account with a retail broker as well. But getting back to this, if the stock was a dollar in your direction, you can make what, $200? It's $200 a day, $1,000 a week. Many traders are not making $1,000 a week. Many traders are losing, okay? $1,000 a week on average is totally doable and it's four grand a month and that is a lot of money for people who are currently losing in the market. And I know everyone wants to make big money, but you have to make small money, grow your account, unless you have the funds to risk large amounts. The confidence you will gain day over day, week over week, month over month, by being green and having more wins will help you once you build your account up to a large account. But again, if you have a large account and you want to start out and you do the class and risk a, a, an advanced amount, then that's up to you. You can day trade with a beginner account though and risk the only difference is your share size is smaller. And then you can grow your account into a larger account. It's all about financial freedom. Everybody's at a different place in life. I think it is important to have goals. Not everybody does have goals. I think it's even important to have small goals. Like what's your goal for the week? What's your goal for the month? What's your goal for the day? Sometimes if you think of it like that, uh, I call it chunking it out. It'll help you wrap your head around it. Sometimes people have a hard time thinking about these big, huge annual goals. They want to make 200 grand a year trading and they just can't seem to grasp the concept of doing it if they've been losing for 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the market. I think make it palatable for yourself. Break it down for yourself, especially if you have a small account so that you can see that it is possible that you can achieve your goals and get to the point that you want to be. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. By doing what? By taking the right actions and by following the system. So the system that I teach is a Golden Gap 26 point rating system. The class is called the Golden Gap course. I teach this class once a month and this is the meat and potatoes. It's the rating system. Day one is a rating system. Day two is all the entries. Last class for 2020 is December 12th and 13th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Cost of the class is $69.99 US dollars. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So this is a weekend class. I always do it on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. This is the last class for the year in December. That's it. If you want to learn and start trading and get in the room this month or even in January, you have to do this class. The trends course is December 14th, which is Monday. It's a combo deal. You save $500 by signing up for both. $74.99 class, again, is online. So I'm doing a few sales before the holiday through uh, this holiday week, Stock Swish Savings. The two big ones for everybody that everyone's excited about that I'm doing for Black Friday is the class, obviously. You learn in the class what to do. And if you sign up by November 29th, the Black Friday sale is you get the trading room and the options newsletter free for one year for the same price of the class, which is $69.99. This is a great deal. You get all my trades for the, for the year. Be in the room. Again, the trades were reviewed in this uh, PowerPoint were all day trades, okay? You would have received all the live calls in the live room, which I call live in the room. The options letter is an, is an options newsletter you get to your email. And those are different trades, just so you know. Sometimes there's overlap, but they're really different trades. The gap options newsletter, if you just want to do options, this is does not include learning the 26 point system you get the newsletter for one year and the gap options course free which is a half day class so that's just a half day class 
You will not learn the 26 points in that class. It's an overview of options to help people starting out with it, how I look at them with the gaps and targets, but you absolutely need to do the Golden Gap course in order to learn the rating system, which is how I make the picks for the options trades in the newsletter. So again, last Golden Gap course for the year, December 12th and 13th, tuition $69.99. You must email me if you want to sign up. You will get the information from me to sign up. You have to fill the forms out and send them to me. I hope everyone has a safe holiday week. If you have questions about the class, day trades, options, email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. And again, all the sales end November 29th. Have a good night.